everyone and happy bank holiday monday to you that's it we've made it the end of a season 46 games played 16 games won 13 draws 17 defeats 61 scored 55 conceded meaning a goal difference of just six 61 points see swindon town finished 10th but a win on the final day of the season and a new manager announced means that uh, there is a bright horizon in the future. Uh, we have a panel ready to discuss the new appointment and today's game as soon as we roll those titles. Take my hands, take my whole life too, but I can't help falling. As always, welcome to everyone joining us. Live chat is open on Facebook and on YouTube, and we are also receiving your tweet notifications as well. Uh, let's say hello to today's panel who were all present uh, alongside myself at the game this afternoon, uh, starting with Bank Holiday Monday Night Joe. Good, <laughs> evening. good evening, sir. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Very, very well. Thank you. Uh, Good, uh, well, good day all round. It started with a, a lovely breakfast, didn't it, at the Harvester, where there was a, a group of about sixteen of us in the end, and yeah, uh, yeah. and then on, and then on to the game after a, a quick one in the Legends, and not a bad result to end the season on. No, no, as I said on Friday, it was important to finish with a win and finish high, high up the league as possible. So, yeah, it wasn't vintage stuff, but I got the job done. At least Scott Lindsay can't be bragging too much tonight. <laughs> No, this is it. He certainly can't be. Um, let We will get more on the game and Lindsay and much more shortly. But uh, let's say hello to a man who has either got a bit of a, uh, a bit of an illness or he may have been singing a little bit too loud at the game today. Evening, Nick. Yeah, hiya, Fifey. How are you, buddy? You all right? Yeah, trying to uh, suppress a cough. So see how long, see how long I last. Yeah, it wasn't... Wasn't too much noise. Actually, that was, um, well, I would say the only disappointment. It's the crowd didn't get going into the last five or ten minutes and the atmosphere was cracking. I mean, we hopefully our new manager, which we'll talk about, 
will get that going because he seems to want to engage with the fans and and you know get a good atmosphere around the ground, which is what we need from from the start, not not at the end. So uh, yeah, that bit was disappointing, but it was great meeting up with everybody beforehand. Most met up with most of the fools, so that's yeah. always a bonus. So uh, whatever else happens, that's uh, good to meet up with some good lads. No, 100%. Could not agree more. And uh, our final panellist, at least for the time being, on this early kickoff of Fools Rush In, uh, he's made it from Swindon to Cheltenham and back uh, to Stratford upon Avon. Evening, Ben. Hi, Fee. How are you doing? Very, very well, sir. Yourself? Marvellous, marvellous. It's good to end the season on such a high. And thank the Lord it's over. It is um, done. It is done. No more pain. The pain is finished for at least three months. So, and uh, how did the uh, how did the boys find it? Final day. Did they enjoy themselves? Uh, well, Freddie had a great time. Jack, who's got spent loyal uh, allegiances with Millwall, um, is not <laughs> upstairs. He's he's a bit grumpy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, they're, they're all all right, and I'm just <laughs> too. So it's all good. Good. Good, glad to hear it. And it looks like uh, another fool has just jumped into the lobby while we've been doing the intro. So uh, let's say hello and good evening to Kieran. Hello. How are you, buddy? You all right? <laughs> Kieran? Excellent. He's frozen. <laughs> Super. Well, well done to Kieran. It was it was lovely seeing you, mate. We'll we'll let you uh, try and sort your connection, <laughs> and we'll welcome you back on again. In a in a few minutes. Um, oh, he's back! Lovely. <laughs> did you uh, did you enjoy your your, uh, your day out again? You were you were there for breakfast and then uh, and then at the game as well. Yeah, to be fair, I'm fucked, mate. Like absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 fucking been stuffing all day. But no, yeah, it's a very good day out. The uh, football was was probably the yeah, first half was enjoyable. Second half just sort of disappeared into nowhere. <laughs> Okay. Um, I would like to start, um, before we talk about the game, I just want to say, I, I, and I hope he's watching live, uh, if not on uh, on repeat, I want to say good evening to Andy. Um, Andy is a Swedish fan who just ha by chance happened to be sat behind me uh, at the game today, tapped me on the shoulder and was um, incredibly kind and complimentary about Fools Rush In. And uh, and so I, I just wanted to say hello, good evening, and uh, and thank you again for your incredibly kind comments about what we do. It really does mean a lot to us that people do do stop do stop us when we're about when they say us say hi and and tell us what they think, good or bad. But you know we really we really like it when it's nice things because it means we're we're clearly doing something something right. Um, so hello and good evening to Andy. Hope you enjoyed your afternoon at the game as well. Uh, enjoyed the win. And hopefully see you again next season. Um, seeing lots of comments start to come in as, uh, as people saying good evening as well. Uh, hopefully we'll have plenty to discuss. Should we get straight on with the game before we talk about the announcement? Um, and uh, Joe, as, we was, as you were saying in your intro there, important to end on a win. But also uh, it, it may not have been a spectacular performance and it may not have been all guns blazing like some people were perhaps expecting but it was it was decent enough compared to what we've been served up a lot this season yeah definitely um <clears throat> some of the some of the games we've been subject to this year have been been dreadful so it, it was sort of nice to see us win a bit differently we didn't play too much sort of possession football for the sake of it we went a bit more direct the first goal certainly came from that you know, long ball forward and Wakeland heading it down. Austin's pace through the middle and finished it off nicely. And but no, it was, yeah, it was what it was. I mean, it was an end of season game one that you could tell both teams weren't really hundred percent going for yeah. it. But it was just nice that uh, Scott Lindsay had his wings clipped a little bit. And uh, well, actually, let, let's let's talk about that side of things first because um, credit to. To Crawley, their their fans came and they sang for, I would say, a good seventy minutes of the ninety. Um, majority of it was Scott Lindsay chants, which Kieran, you were you were near me, and it was all right to begin with. Then got a bit repetitive, and then we just started taking the piss out of it a little bit. But um, to be fair to their fans, but they came in in decent numbers for their support size and, and and made a bit of noise, which, as Nick was saying, something that the Swindon fans are perhaps guilty of not doing enough of. 
yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I thought you, you know they did, they did make it a sort of half decent atmosphere for an end of game, end of season game that didn't really mean anything. Um, there was always going to be the Scott Lindsay factor, obviously. That was always going to be, a, especially with his comments in the week. Um, shame he didn't back up his comments really, wasn't it? But anyway, <laughs> um, no, it's like I say, it was just nice to see the season out, new managers here. You know, the, the things seem to be moving quickly. Um, and uh, also, shout out as well, because I thought before his free kick, Jake came struggling a bit. Mm. And after he was awful. Kick, and then after, his free, kick, after his free kick, he improved massively. So that, that little bit of confidence from that goal. Um, and what a goal it was, by the way. What a strike. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, big up to him because I thought he improved drastically after his, after his goal. So fair play to him. And Ben, we were both just on 606 before we came live here and we both kind of said the same thing. Um, credit to Crawley um, on the pitch 12 for, for a good sort of 20, 25 minutes, particularly in that first half, that they were fairly impressive. Their, their press was was decent. They, they looked like they were up for it and they were trying they to make it more than a, a dead rubber game. Yeah, well, obviously they didn't treat it like it was just an end of the season game with nothing to play for. That's probably well motivated because of who their manager was. But they also didn't play like a team struggling in the bottom two. They, they had a bit about them. Um, they pressed high. Uh, their movement was pretty good. Um, obviously, that faded after we scored. They just stopped playing like that. And they came. They started making individual errors. And they became more of a team that you would uh, recognise being towards the bottom half of the league or the bottom of the league. Um, but, yeah, they gave us some headaches to start with. Um, and I was thinking this is not going to be the... There's the six goals that I thought we were going to get. Um, but, uh, you know, the Austin goal came. I think that's probably our second or third shot on target. Uh, it was really well taken. And then you know, we hit them a double whammy. And I think that that, that was them done. Um, even after that penalty, they didn't really look like getting back in the game. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, um, I think I, I think they were uh, their fans were noisy. I think that helped. I think they were well motivated, but a bit like Lindsay's teams, they sort of like fell away as the game went on. Um, but yeah, uh, they, they weren't terrible. I think we were slightly better. We weren't brilliant ourselves. We should have put them to the sword the second half, um, but we didn't. But um, yeah, it was it was it was co it was co a competent performance. Yeah. And uh, I think we had extra gears to go in. If we needed to get an extra goal, I think we could have. Um, but yeah, it's it is what it is. It's done now. It's it's the end of the season. So the team that starts in August will nothing like this one. Um, so that's what it is. No. Kieran, were we perhaps a little bit fortunate to go in at half time, two goals up? Um, I think yeah, you'd probably say Crawley probably a bit hard, feel a bit hard done by going in 2-0 down I think maybe we deserved one goal but they they did sort of they started brighter for most of the first half I'd say until we sort of had we had little glimmers um but I think we should have we should have gone in leading um two goals might have flattered us a little bit but I think the win probably flatters us a little bit um more than more than there'd be I think a draw would have probably been a fair result but yeah I think we weren't we didn't really we, we started sloppy we got going about a half hour in and then probably a bit lucky with the way Austin's goal well probably more lucky with Jake Kane's goal than Austin's Austin's has sort of come in um and Kane Kane's goal was just an absolute wonder strike wasn't it, it he was got, he got, his man of the match after that he was fucking awful with he was first, a man he was a man hour. possessed after his goal wasn't he he, was, he fucking everywhere I don't know where he was supposed <laughs> to be playing it reminds me of like when you play in school, school final day of the season everyone just fucking starts playing everywhere he was like fuck it I ain't playing back here I'm going up front I want a hat trick um <laughs> and fair play to him but obviously he's desperate to impress the man sitting up in the stands I imagine um and I don't know if he would be impressed or just like what the fuck have I got myself into of course he knows him from previous as well um, Nick, but we have an, another full waiting to enter the fray before we do. Um, two two penalties awarded in the game, one dispatched confidently, and one hammered very, very hard, but not converted. Yeah, I don't know what Charlie Austin's doing, <clears throat> giving penalties away. You're, you're a goal scorer, just take keep the ball in, take the bloody penalty. Should never ever, if you're the main penalty taker, you should take it. Forget all this sentiment crap in football. You're the man, you take the penalty, you score, no matter what game it is. 
Um, <clears throat> so that was, that was disappointing. Um, fair play to the keeper. It's a decent save. So, you know, he guessed right, got to it, blocked it. So give him a bit of credit. Um, but, but talking about the performance in the game, I think, and, and, and Ben got it spot on there, Crawley, in that first 10, 15 minutes, played more football than the whole time that Lindsay was in charge of Swindon. I, I said to that, my lad, Christ, that, you know, that's that's not the Lindsay we had at Swindon. <clears throat> so, yeah, they, they, they looked fairly decent. But, you know, then it petered out into a poor game, basically two poor sides at the end of the game. So it's, you know, the league, the league table doesn't lie, does it? So, um, as we said, we're, we're where we are, where we deserve to be. And uh, there's lots of positives now to move on. So uh, look, look forward to next season. Absolutely. And that's a, a great time to say hello and good evening to Woody. How are you, buddy? Good evening. Yeah, I thought How you were good? dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't realise I smelled that bad earlier, <laughs> <laughs> Um Actually, you've, you've come on at a, a good time because I, I wanted, I was about to flash up this comment from Christian and it links into the question I was going to bring you in with. Hepburn Murphy's an interesting one, isn't he? Because he's clearly a player with, with talent and ability. But when you watch him play, he seems to do the harder stuff quite well. But the, the stuff that, that we as fans would perhaps view as the easier ones, particularly when it comes to chances of scoring, he could score good goals, but the easier chances, he seems to fluff his lines a lot. Yeah, I think today, I think I said to you, Fife, didn't I, today, that the uh, today really proved why he's in League Two, um, to be totally honest. I think I've had the same. I've had the same reservations all season with Hepburn Murphy, even when he went on his kind of goal scoring run. I don't I don't dislike him. I don't not rate him as a player, but he is almost borderline Alan O'Brien, um, in my opinion. Kind of got a lot of a lot of pace, a lot of pace and very rarely has very rarely has an end product. Um I think he had that little purple patch, which, you know, he did well. And he does create a lot for us. But, Alan, I mean, we, we I know it was a running joke with every Swindon fan, but Alan O'Brien did create stuff as well. So it's, <clears throat> I just think that sometimes I think, I think Kieran said it to me earlier, actually, he almost tries too hard to yeah. score. Like, he, it's almost like he, that's where he doesn't have that striker's ability, where he can't just, um, you know, get into the area and know, he doesn't know where the goal is, I think, to be totally honest. He's not like mm -hmm. a natural striker, but, I don't think he's a player. I don't think he's rubbish, and I don't think, but I don't think he's as good as a lot of people say he is. I think a lot of people maybe get blinded by the fact that he's a quick player and can get up the field quick and does and does work hard. Every every Swindon fan loves a trier, um, yeah. and I'm not going to take that away from him. I wouldn't want him to go. I wouldn't want him to. Go. I think he could he could be a part of something, but if. If we think about the times what games he hasn't scored, very rarely do we score. Um, so it's um, so he's not really creating too much from my liking as well. And he hangs on to the ball too long when he's in the area as well. Um, I think there was an opportunity earlier where he could have laid it off to Wakelin or it might have been Charlie at the point as well. And he just didn't. And he just carried it an extra forward step. And it's um, but and and I think what we got to remember is people think he's really young. He's not. He's like twenty seven, like I think it's like twenty twenty seven. I think he is twenty five. Yeah, yeah. He's 20, in the 20s. So he's an experienced player. At the end of the day, I know he hasn't had too much in terms of games because of his injuries. But um, I just, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm slating him. I just don't think he's as he's as good as we all think he is because I think he is a little bit of a a bit of a, a trier, a bit good bit of pace in a team that has performed badly this season. Yeah, he's, no, I understand that. He is, a, he is a handful in games, isn't he? But he yeah. lacks a lot of composure. He tries to smash everything. You know, a bit like that penalty today. Let the keeper go down and just roll it in the other side like Telford did. You know, just a little bit, have a little bit of composure. You can't you can't try and rip the net out of the, out the ground every time. You've got to try I, and uh, place a few I think things. injuries, sorry, I, I think injuries um, at key times to his career, um, having a couple of years out has really affected his development as a player. Um, and I think that's a shame for him because potentially he could be brilliant. Um, maybe someone like Charlie could teach him composure. 
because you're never too old to learn and he could have that season where he just grows he could be a late developer um but i i, I understand totally what people are saying that he's frustrating because he, he he's tricky and he's a nightmare and he, you know there's so many teams struggle to cope with him but he should have more of a fact um as in goals and assists than he is having some he's scoring some goals he's created some assists you know there's games he's been really good but he should you know he could be better he could step up but um yeah he's quite frustrating but he's, he's good for this level but i i think at the moment he's a good, very good league two player he could be better if he'd stayed injury free earlier in his career I think um, I was talking to Ned during the game about it. And the thing that I said was he, the one thing, and it links into what Woody was saying about his decision-making and not releasing the ball. The one thing that frustrates me about his play is probably the same thing that instantly put me off shade. And it's his, he wants to do everything and he like, and he's probably good enough to do most of it, but I would much rather he uses his pace, gets into the position, and then just plays a simple pass. It mm. doesn't he doesn't have to go for glory all the time. And then I watched Shade come on, and initially the players wouldn't give him the ball, but eventually, once he did get it, he tried the same thing. He he kept the ball, he ran, he ran, he ran, and then got dispossessed. And it's just like if if both of you could just decide, no, I don't need to do it all myself and play the simple pass. I think it'd be a lot more productive for the team first and foremost, but it would also reflect better on them that that they are team players and not in it for themselves personally. Um, that, that's just my my take on that one. Um, let's uh, let, let's move on then to uh, it's been mentioned already, uh, kind of. But Kieran, uh, let's talk about the, the free kick from Kane. Um, we were we were literally next to it, and, and I've said to a few people. The ball must have been in the net for about six seconds before any of us celebrated because we just none of us realised that he'd even done it. No, it was a hell of a thing to sort of get that ball past because the keeper was a fucking big old boy, wasn't he? Like he, that's yeah. what I was going back to going back to the penalty. Like that penalty, you need to put in e any of the corners because he's fucking saving it top corner, fucking anywhere you put it, it pretty much he'll save it. Um, He's, yeah, he looks like a cracking little keeper. But yeah, it was a fucking hell of a free kick, sort of just getting up and over. You didn't expect it. I think no one in ground expected him to score for that one. <laughs> like, with how he'd been playing, you like, just, I just sort of saw him run up and take it and just gone, fuck's that gone in? Like, yeah. Well, it, ju it just shows what we know, doesn't it? Because I turned around the set piece previously on the left hand side where I turned around, it was either to yourself or to Ned again at that point and said, if he wastes this one as well, can we take him off set pieces, please? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, he just hadn't done anything. Then all of a sudden, picks that out of the top corner. It reminds me a bit of when Ellis scored his first goal. I think it was against Barnet from a random free kick. Like, wasn't Ellis's one was a little bit more impressive, maybe? But it reminds me of that just fucking out of nothing, dead rubber game <laughs> scoring, scoring a goal like that. But no, hopefully that's that might be that might be the turnaround for him. Like a little bit of confidence he needs. Sort of he improved after that within the game in general. It might be the thing that he needs to come back next season and be up for it in preseason. Going, you know what? I've got got that goal. Got a bit of confidence about him and could become a cracking little player. I think he, he's young and he's yeah probably had a bit of a mixed season. He's had two different managers or three different managers, two sort of different managers since he's been here. He had Gun Gunning when he came in, didn't he? I think still. And then Morris, which I think less than about him, probably the better now. Um and then Gunning again. So hopefully and Flynn, he's Flynn likes him. Flynn, Flynn's had him before. So that's a that's gonna be a positive sign for us as well if he's here next year. Um but yeah, it's uh it was a hell of a free kick and I think it was a free kick that went in. It was good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joe from where you were, uh, without wishing this to sound disrespectful, it got announced that uh, Bryn got man of the match and we all kind of <laughs> turned to each other and said, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think half the ground did that. I think half the ground, it's like... Fucking Joe managed to speak without moving his lips then. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, as a talent, you can throw his voice where I've moved mine and like, <laughs> he's talking. Go on, Joe. Well, our reaction was exactly the same. I mean, he made that one save, didn't he, with his feet, I think, second half with, a, I don't know, five minutes ago or something. But when they read it out, everyone was just like, there must be his family in the in the box or something. <laughs> yeah. It was, That's what weird, was... it was such a weird, I mean, it was a difficult game to, to pick a standout player, but he was probably at the bottom of the list, to be honest, because he just didn't really do anything. Like... <laughs> He, he, had uh, yeah, two, he pretty much had two things to do all game. One one good save and one picking the ball out the net. Yeah, and it was just it was <laughs> it was just a reaction of the whole stadium, like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> Maybe his mum and dad were sponsoring the game. No, that's what I was saying. There must have been somebody mm. up there that liked him because obviously. Well, yeah. I think you all know how good the wine is and the sponsors thing and stuff. Well, it's 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 fucking, judge, which player? Uh, fucking number one can't get past. If, if you can't your judgment that, that uh, hospitality luck, but yeah, I mean, uh, there was, there was, there was Andy, four or five players that would have been more worthy of it than him. Uh, Andy, that I mentioned in the intro, has tweeted in saying, "Thank you for the message in the intro. It was nice to have a chat after watching you on here. A shame we don't have the playoffs to look forward to this time around. Have a good summer." Um, We've got a message in from the old Duffers as well, to be fair, um, asking on that note, who was man of the match? So uh, let's go round and ask. Ben, I'll start with you. Oh, you'd have to start with me, didn't you? Um, I would say... Um, it's going to be quite hard, really, because there was lots of OK performance, lots of six and sevens out of tens, but there was no real standout. Um I would so I am actually going to say possibly Austin, um, because this link up play was pretty good and it he was. actually put a shift in today. And, um, I think we saw the old Austin that we saw when he first toned up when he first came back into the club. The Austin that was talking, communicating, um, dropping deep, picking up the ball, linking up the play well, and bringing others into it. Mm -hmm. I think we saw that, but not because he was outstanding, though. I don't think he was outstanding, but okay. um, I think he probably gets 7.1 out of 10, where there's lots of people get sevens. Okay. Nick? Um, well, as we know, anybody who sponsors a match knows jack shit about football, so... <laughs> We all we all know that, and we've had we that experience. That. We all know that. Um, yeah, like like Ben said, it was. I mean, nobody was stood out. There was a few players below par. Um, Calm was his usually busy self. You know, did a few good things, did a few bad things, like he usually does. Lavinia always looks pretty solid, so I'll give it between those two. But okay. there was nobody that really deserved it above, above anybody else so it's and it, it's like i said before i think it depends where you're sitting as to what sort of game you see so um but yeah to me either lavinia or khan okay joe uh yeah i think i'd, I'd probably go with austin i think i don't know how, how people how many people noticed but he was actually playing as a sort of number 10 for most yes of false nine was, i had it a false yeah, nine sort of, Behind, he was sort of behind Wakelin and, and Hepburn Murphy, and I, I thought he was very effective in there actually, you yeah, know, hold, holding the ball up and, and winning his headers and things. And, um, yeah, it, it was tricky. I mean, it wasn't that, like, say, we, we've said nobody really stood out. I thought Brewer had a half decent game, and, and Clayton, I thought they were both pretty half decent. I thought Clayton did do well, to be fair, yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, I just said Jake came for the 20 minutes after his goal, he was he was unbelievable. Really? To be um, but yeah, I think. On, on the whole, I think Austin's hold up play when it, you know, is good, just good centre forward play, you know, good yeah. holding the ball up, winning his headers, obviously mm -hmm. got himself a goal. Yeah, that, I think he'd have been the one for me. Kieran? Yeah, it's probably Austin or Clayton, because Clayton, Clayton just didn't have much to do, but what he does, he does what he does well. He's consistent. He sort of does, does what he does well and like to see someone experienced in there with him next season um, with Brewer as a backup, but I think Austin edges it just purely because he says his link up play, he got the goal, he was sort of everywhere, and it's sort of a bit of a captain's performance. And I think it says a lot that most people's man of the match uh, was a guy that went off on right about <laughs> 60 minutes through the game. So it was typical dead rubber, but I think there was, as everyone says, very average performances. No one really stood out. Even Austin probably just pips it because of his goal and because he sort of was helping everyone out and sort of that, that link up play. But apart from that, very average performance and you can tell it's the end of the season and everyone's on the beach, especially Hutton. <laughs> and finally, Woody? Um, yeah, I mean, Austin was impressive, but he was playing with a point to prove. Um, I'm probably actually going to give it to McEachran, um, because mm. I think the first 10 minutes... 15 minutes Gladwin looked like he was going to cause us trouble you know he was he was dinking in and out he was putting some good balls out to the right and then McEachran kind of switched his focus a little bit and he really kept Gladwin under wraps um I know including myself mixed opinions on Gladwin but he showed at times today he showed what we probably have missed and I think McEachran did particularly well considering he's half his height um as well <laughs> so I just think 
I just I think probably probably because that's the player I watched the most as well. Is is you know like I just thought that you know his distribution was pretty good. Yeah. Um, obviously he's I think he was the one that leashed the clearance that then Wakelin flicked on for yeah. for Austin. Um, so yeah, uh, Austin. Yeah, like I said, it is a t- it is a type for me between Austin Mc- McEachran, but I think um, yeah, Austin just had a point to prove, and I'm glad he's I'm glad he proved it. Okay. Um, Nick, could we have a, a word on the, the two players who came out for the second half and both lasted about 90 seconds? Um, Wakelin, I thought, up until the point where clearly he took a knock to the hit, he, he looked very good. And and Lavinia, as you said uh, earlier, he, he always looked solid. And, and there were times where, again, he, he threatened. He just really needs a left foot if he's going to be deployed as a left back. Yeah, I suppose he's... He's put in there because needs must. Um, so it'd be interesting to see where he plays next season. Yeah, it seemed we um, when the substitutions were being made, it's like you know what the hell's going on? Why, why, why do it a minute or so or two minutes into the second half? Why not just do it at half time? It's yeah, it just seemed a bit of an odd, odd thing to do. So um, yeah, I mean, wait, wait, clean was his usual self busy puts the effort in i mean you you just can't fault him on on any of that and i think he's he's going to only improve and and just going back to um what we were talking about earlier with kane he, he was absolutely dreadful um i mean for a player that's come out of liverpool academy he can't pass a ball it it was absolutely terrible he's got a re- he, he come with a reputation for a good free kick taker and he and he showed that today um, hopefully, um, our new man will get performance out of him because he had him at Newport, I think, for a whole season. So you know that that bodes well because you know I said to my to my lad I was with, they need to put Kane on loan for a season down into into the national league to give him a good season of of men's football. But you know maybe he will be in the team in around the team um, with him. Um, you know someone who obviously knows what he's like and maybe can get the best out of him. So that's what I'm looking forward to next season is how, how players can be improved because, you know, we all thought Morris would improve young players, but if anything, they went backwards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's, let's hope that we've got players that can be improved, young players with a spattering of experience to back them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm looking forward to next season. Well, we, we come to the the point now where, of course, all the players' futures will be considered and decided. And, and we're not going to go through everyone tonight. We've got our season review show uh, next Monday. So that'll, uh, that'll be a time to, to reflect on the performances of the players. But one thing that did come out um, was after the game was this uh, Instagram post, which was then put out on uh, Charlie Austin's Twitter as well. Um, and uh, Joe, I'll start with you. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen it um, and, and you're listening back on audio, it is available on all social medias. Does that look like a goodbye to you? Uh, poten- potentially. Um, yeah, yeah, it's difficult at this time of the season. People can post anything and you can interpret it however you like. But um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I, you know, I, I'd like to think, I think he showed today he's certainly got another season in him. Um, you know, and hopefully, I think his experience will be key. I think he's the sort of player that Michael Flynn will want to work with. So, um, yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, like I say, it's difficult. Players players post things this time of the season and everybody thinks they're going or, or whatever. So, you know, we won't know in, until it's done and or until we're told which way it's going. Um, but, but hopefully, hopefully he's going to be sticking around. Um, Garth says uh, in the comments, reads as if he's off. It's a shame. Would love to see him stay another year. Um, Claire has been in touch as well. Evening Claire, uh, who, who had a wonderful picture with Falls Washington favourite Tommy Adeloy earlier. Um, a, a player who I really hope. I, I genuinely, out, just a complete side note. Tommy, I think, is a Flynn player, so I, I genuinely am hopeful he might get to stay next year and might actually get to play. 
Um, but uh, and, and I really hope that's the case. But Claire says on Nick's point about Kane and his passing, remember Wellens saying that about Twine, and yeah, maybe he's good at free kicks, etc. etc. Uh, wink emoji. And then um, on the game again itself, and uh, Woody, I'll start with you here. Uh, Ian says, Did anyone think any of our subs today offered anything? We have a distinct lack of quality to change games. Well, I think that's been our problem all season. We haven't we haven't got game changers on the bench, have we? Um, you know, I I said today that the no, in my opinion, no manager was really going to do anything with that squad. Um, you know, even though that contradicts what I probably said back in August. But the um, yeah, I just I mean, I don't rate Darcy at all. Um, he wouldn't get into a lot of League Two teams, I don't think so. Um, he didn't. He came on and didn't really make too much of a difference. Uh, Shade, yeah, he just runs sometimes. Um, and who was the other sub for Wake? Was it the, for Wakeland the other sub? Tomlinson. Tomlinson. I mean, Tomlinson did okay, but he didn't do best left back in the league standards. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the um, um, yeah, I mean. We, we know what we've got to do as, and that is that is spot on we seem to be lacking quality and depth and uh we're also lacking a little bit of quality in the, <laughs> in the first 11 as well um, so um yeah it's i think i don't i think they've made subs because they needed to wakelin i think he picked up that injury just before half time they probably said to him go and see how it is after a couple of sprints or whatever and it's obviously fucked and I, i'm guessing marcel's was an injury i didn't hear um, much of post-match but i'm guessing marcel's was an injury as well so um but yeah no but we know that's the problem we know the recruitment was off this year and that's probably what's cost us being higher in the league um gav has been in touch good to see gav today uh he said uh which fool has the highest points per game from games they've attended it's got to be you five yeah, yeah i was gonna say due to my due to the fact i've been to less games but i think I think I've only been to one that we've lost. Oh, it's going to be five for them. That was Carlisle, I think. Um, the game we sponsored. Yeah, the game we sponsored. <laughs> I think I think the other games we've at least got a draw, so I imagine I must be up there. But I, I think I've, I've only seen us lose Carlisle at home. Carlisle, that Carlisle game is the only one I, I think I've seen us lose this season, possibly. Okay. I, need, nice. I need to go back you through it. Because I've seen us lose loads. And I yeah, think I everyone's been regular. So <laughs> anyone who's gone regular has seen us lose loads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, good friend of the show, Paddy's also been in touch via Twitter. First of all, saying good evening, hallowed comrades. I thought the new gaffer spoke really well at halftime, said the right thing. So good luck to him. And then followed it up with, I'd like to nominate you gentlemen, the lady supporters and STFC women players as his men and women of the match for entertaining us all through the season. I doff my hat to you all. P.S. Hope Nick feels better soon. So there you go. And it has to be said, Joe will remember this because it got the it got the same reaction from both of us, Nick. We never told you this. When we went for breakfast this morning, the very first question we got is, where's the older guy? He's the one I want to meet. <laughs> <laughs> me and, and me, me and Joe just turned around and went, for fuck's sake, people are only ever interested in Nick. Everyone loves Nick. <laughs> we yeah, it, it, it was just a bit early for me to get from my place to Swindon. I'd have loved to have come over, but... Uh... Yeah, maybe we'll have another meet up sometime. Oh, and, uh, I wouldn't mind it, but they didn't even say hello to start with. They just said, Where's the old <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, Christian uh, has been in touch on that earlier question. I've seen us lose more than win. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think most people most have. <laughs> uh, Mike says, I haven't seen us lose any matches this season. Oh, there you go. Mike wins. Oh. <laughs> but has Mike seen any wins or draws this season either? Can I just go back to the Austin thing as well? I think it might have been telling. If it definitely 100% is mine was up, made up on leaving, he definitely takes that penalty in front of the town end. So I mm. um, think that might be, uh, might be a clue, especially his words to Rip Hodgett saying he'd like to stay. So I think, that, I think there's a possibility that the conversation could go on. Not saying that he's going to stay, definitely. But or he I just saw the Austin size of that keeper and went, if, fuck if that. If his mind's made up of going, he takes that pen. Yeah. yeah, I think um, I think as well. I, I've said to Kieran, I, I I think he would be a good Flynn player, as well. I think using that kind of 
And because uh, I'm one of those that doesn't think that Flint's hoofball, because I think if you watch the latter end of his Newport team, they weren't hoofball. They played the ball quite well. Um, and I think Flynn likes to surround himself with good, experienced players. So I think it really depends on what the budget says um, mm. as well. I think, <clears throat> do I think, could we get two good players for, for Austin? Maybe. Uh, but I think if we can keep him, we keep him because I think Flynn will really play to his advantage because that's what Flynn does. That's why Flynn has good records against teams at the top end of the table because he knows how to utilise players properly. Um, so, yeah, I just hope, yeah, it'd be good if he does stay. But it did, it, it read as a goodbye, but it was also a Charlie Austin ism. Um, it's kind <laughs> of like, I mean, it was almost like Bianca writ it as well because she does that quite a lot little plants as well so um i mean it could be anything it could be even his agent going you know put a little feeder out there because that's how you're going to get more money because the fans are going to put pressure on the club and they're going to say come on you need to sign him at all costs um so yeah i think um i think it is a little bit of a feeder rather than a goodbye yeah, I, I was just going to say, Woody, that it, uh, he, he wants that uh, improved contract or at least matched contract. So, uh, yeah, he, he, he's putting the fishing line out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Pipe is getting arrested. <laughs> That's not coming out my window, <laughs> believe me, mate. Um, I'm just going to bring up the match stats off the BBC. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Ben, when I look at those, uh, the majority look to be in the right direction. You know, we've had shots. We've had a decent percentage on target, um, slightly over 50%. We've had a decent amount of corners. Are you surprised, given the nature of how Swindon have tried to play, that that it's one of the few occasions we've had less possession than the opposition? I think it was touched on when Joe went. It was a little bit of a um, um, mixed performance, as in we mixed it up a little bit. Um, because there was some moments of nice football and there's some moments we went long. You know, it's unlike Lindsay to have most possession and only four shots on target. Um, but yeah, no, it's it, it, it was, um, it, 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 we were more direct at times and I think that worked. Um, I think it went a little bit against the grain, which is probably why we weren't so smooth at it because it's not something we're particularly used to. But also, it might be more of a custom of a Flynn type of game where he does mix it up where there's going to be games where you can play football and there's going to be times where you do not play football. And um, I think that was, you know, I think they were just trying to do something in his kind of mould. Um, why not? It's the last game of the season. You might as well have a go and try. And the players are trying to show off that sort of what they can do before he makes a final decision on them and who wants to move on and who he wants to keep. 100%. Um, Woody, a word on um, on Gav Gunning as well, to be fair, because I believe the official record that sits for this season, three games, two wins and a draw. Yeah. Yeah, he's fair play to him. Um, I still stand by it. It's easy when it's a free hit for you um, because he had nothing to lose today, really. Um, so, yeah, he's... Um, I don't think it was as attacking as the other two games that no. he, he put in, but... I think the personnel was slightly different. The game so also because Crawley play. maybe approached it differently as well. Well, I, I, I missed it. obviously I missed the start of of the pod, and I think that I think over, but I, I actually think Crawley came at us a bit better yeah. Um, yeah. than I expected. I don't. I think they were poor over the game, um, but they definitely pressed against us well. They definitely they weren't a Scott Lindsay side or the Scott Lindsay side we saw. Um, yeah. But then that I do, as I said earlier, I think. A lot of that is down to the actual players he had at his disposal. But the um, yeah, it, it's yeah, fair play to Gav. He's you know he made some good. Um, he didn't really make too many changes, but there did seem to be a bit more of an emphasis on what Charlie Austin's role was for the team. Wakelin seemed a little bit more lively than I'd seen in the last couple of games that I've that I've managed to watch. Um, there that. It is quite clear that there was something there between the players and Jody Morris that, that wasn't right. I think that's the obvious thing today. And I think when, because Gunning is still kind of that player mould a little bit, because obviously he is a registered player, um, they, they the players want to do it for him a little bit as well, you know, because he's he's effectively one of them. Um, so, yeah, it's um, 
you know, and I can't criticise his subs because, like we've already alluded to, that the subs weren't weren't there. I just hope he is here next year because I just think that it seems that him and Mildy have got a good connection. Um, and obviously, I think getting rid of if if Flynn ended up getting rid of Mildy, that would be criminal. Um, but it's um, yeah, fair play to Gav. But again, I'm not gonna. It's it's easy when it's a free hit to to kind of experiment. If we gave him a whole season, I don't think we'd be saying the same thing here at this time next season, if he had the whole season. Um, before we move on to talk more specifically about the appointment of Flynn, but is there anything else from today's game that anyone wants to pick up on at all? <clears throat> yeah, what was Dom Telford doing trying to pick a fight with Gav Gunning? <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> well, quite, quite. quite. Uh, and it has what- to be... St- Oh, go on, Nick. Sorry. Oof. Oh, Kieran, sorry. <clears throat> One more. For, to be fair, Scott <laughs> Lindsay, no, not that many Swindon fans had that many bad feelings towards him until midweek, and he started running his mouth off. And I think he, uh, hopefully he's learned his fucking lesson today <laughs> about fucking <clears throat> doing that. Because I don't know what Lindsay was expecting, but yeah, I think running his mouth off midweek when probably say. 80% of the Swindon fans would have probably still had him, I said, to keep until the end of the season and just follow through on the shit that we were doing anyway. But he obviously ran off and left. Um, and hopefully he's learned his lesson not to be such an arrogant cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, he, 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 there's a very, very, very smug photo of him doing that in front of the... Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, the, the watched, we watched it. It was fucking... Honestly, they, 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 they're a little club, so they worship whoever they can get, to be honest. And... It was just, I get that he's kept them up and obviously Wagner's money have kept them up as well and they don't sing mm-hmm. their names. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, and he, he's loving it. But I think next season they'll have a bit of a crash crash down to earth. But I hope, to be fair, I hope they don't. I hope he, I hope he gets them going and they have a good season and don't just don't beat us or anything. But hopefully they have a good season. He gets, gets what he deserves and I think he deserves a fair crack at a proper management job. Um, he seems to be doing all right there, but I just think if he keeps, he just needs to stop being an arrogant cunt and running his mouth off and thinking everything was all, oh, we hate you, Scott. Blah, blah, blah. To be fair, I don't think it was that bad. It has to be said on that front, I very much did appreciate the input of both Kieran and Woody, who took the Crawley pa- fans' passionate support of their players and staff and redirected it expertly back at them after chanting just a shit Don Telford. At Charlie Austin, as soon as he scored, they both stood up and started chanting. He's just a shit Dom Telford. <laughs> and uh, and then there was the uh, and then after describing uh, Gunning as a shit Scott Lindsay, it then turned round to just a shit Gav Gunning, <laughs> among other yeah. sarcastic retorts to the Crawley fans. Well, it was very- also, that liner was shit. <laughs> well, oh, yes. yeah. Woody yeah. hated him. <laughs> yeah, Woody, Woody may have had one or two disagreements. I, I may have uh, had a couple of words for him at times as well. Uh, certainly wasn't a masterful performance from the linesman, that's for sure. Woody was keeping it. score, though. At one point, he said one more and we're level <laughs> in terms of bad decisions. I think it's not yeah. like. Woody, Woody paints this picture. I bet if it was Bassett, he would not be complaining at the linesman the way he was. Oh, I bet you would. Just... <laughs> I just, I, I, I t- it'd be worse. I, t- I totally forgot at one point as well that we were surrounded by children when because he just wasn't given anything to wake him, was he? The whole game, no. <laughs> wake him, right. push, kicked, and I just went as he shagged your missus, <laughs> and I was just like, "Shit, there's a load of kids around here." <laughs> so it's just like... But yeah, he he was. Oh, I don't. I just don't. I didn't get. And the fact he just smiled at everything. He was like that. Um, yeah, I just think. Yeah, there's. He just smiled. He just irritated me, and I think he knew it. Uh, Pad, Paddy's tweeted in. My mate Denzel's lad had a cardboard sign for today saying, "Ben Nichols, can I have your shirt?" But sadly, he left it in the car. Old school shenanigans. <laughs> Also, one one last thing. Charlie Austin's son when shit house of the fucking oh. season. <laughs> Some lad at the front of Don Rogers has got a shirt, and there's a couple of lads there. Charlie Austin, can I please have your shirt? So Austin's got a shirt or something. He's given it to his young lad and taken it. His young lad's gone over to the crowd, and I don't know what he said to them, but he just showed them the shirt, held it out, and then walks away. <laughs> 
At least I'm fucking sure hundred percent. Two lads. Two lads you just fucking don't up. take a don't take a fucking sign for shirts. Sure. You got what you deserved, and I would love it. I don't know what was said, but fair play to Austin and his lads. Shit houses of the season. Give him a trophy for it. <laughs> he, he he did give his shirt to a young lad at the end after they'd walked round the pitch. There's a young lad in the corner that uh, Charlie directed his son to go and take the shirt to by the by the disabled area. Oh, that's a nice touch, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. He's obviously so, promised I thought, it to someone already. Yeah, I saw Brewer. Brewer gave his shirt to somebody. That's probably the first time anybody's ever asked for his shirt. Yeah. Just... Probably, it's the first time the Scouts has given something away that they've not stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Some argue he has stolen. Say. <laughs> Kit Melly going for a fuck sake, mate. Fuck me, I fucking. That was mine. It was actually Austin. Stop. 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 Um, yes, Claire's, uh, Claire's very correct in her comments. Charlie gave his shirt to a young lad in a wheelchair, also called Charlie, who was mascot today. I did see a number of players, including Blake Tracy and Tommy Adeloy, sharing pictures on their social medias uh, yeah. about meeting Charlie today as well. Um, right, let's move on before Kieran gets us cancelled, shall we? And uh, let's talk about our new gaffer. Um, when asked earlier, I said that I felt it was a move designed to get us out of the league, but I wouldn't be anticipating the most entertaining football we've seen uh, in a while for the next nine months. Uh, Nick, would you agree with that assessment? And what are you hoping for from Flynn? I wouldn't agree with that at all, Fifey. The football we've seen in the last nine months, we can't be any worse than that because it has been absolutely dire. We haven't seen any football. So he can do nothing but improve it. And if he improves it by making us a solid side, one that doesn't fanny about, one that knows what they're doing, the players know their jobs, that, that will do for me. And as I said earlier, if he can improve some of the younger players we've got, um, in this side and bring that bit of experience in. To me, um, you know, it, it bodes well for the future. And and I think the bigger thing is he will have um, a link and a time with the fans and, and he will bring that sort of management and fans and team together, whereas they've been totally apart the whole season, uh, apart from Gavin's games. Um, so to me, you know, from that point of view, um, it, you know, if we can get nearly 10,000 Swindon fans in to the last game of the season, and I know a lot of people always go to the last game of the season, but it's still a hell of a crowd and, and we can get off on the right foot and we get big crowds into the county ground and, and get the atmosphere going. That That's what he's got to do. Win, win the fans over from day one and, you know, and we're going to be on the right track. So, um, yeah. Whatever football he plays, Fifey, it is going to be a damn sight better than we've seen this season. Uh, I mean, I can remember probably five five or six games that I've actually enjoyed, and, and most of those were away. So oh, nice. let's get the county ground rocking. Let's get a county ground fortress and, and give the home fans something to cheer. No, 100%. Yeah. Uh, Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy. Um I, I probably had a list of three that Finn would have been on. So, you know, we are what we are. Mid-table <laughs> league two team. You know, that's my wife He's being haunted. <laughs> that's my wife playing some random thing on her phone. Um, <laughs> no, we are we are what we are. You know, mid-table league two team. You're not what else? What else are you expecting? You know, we we tried a young coach. It didn't work. We had to try something different, and they've gone for. A relatively who's who's still a relatively young manager, but is experienced as well. So, um, and all this 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 talk that he's he's only hoofball this that and the other, he he will play to the players that he's got. Yeah. So if he thinks he's got play, we've got good footballers in our side. So he he will play some. Yeah, there'll be times when he goes direct up to a big striker or whatever or set pieces. But that you, you know, like Woody said earlier, that his last season at Newport, they were actually one of the better footballing teams in the league. So. He's pretty, he's uh, he is uh, flexible and he knows when to to mix it up. You know when to go long, when to play a bit of football, and that's what we've needed. You know we've been too one-dimensional 
for probably the last two seasons. We got away with it last yeah. season, but but this season, it, you know, has been too sort of one dimensional and predictable. So, yeah, I, I think he'll uh, it make us hard to beat, which will be that. That's an you know, you don't see Michael Flynn teams rolling over and getting getting a tummy tickle, dear. So that's the that's the, the the first key thing is just make us hard to beat and then and then build on from there. Okay, uh, Ben. Yeah, um, he's going to be something a little bit different. Um, I agree with Woody. He's just not going to be hoofball, as some fans, Jason, um, has pointed out on um, Twitter, um, going around telling most of the fans. Um, I think he's going to gonna make us uh, a lot tougher to beat. Um, I think he's going to bring in a lot more experienced players. I think he's had two playoff campaigns in four years. He knows the division the back to front. Um, I think... I think it's a positive move. Um, obviously, there's no guarantees in football. You can't say he's actually definitely going to give us a promotion campaign or definitely going to be up there, but you can't say that with anyone. Um, but it is a, 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 a signing of intention. Um, they could have been a lot worse. They could have made a. It could have been a lot worse appointment. And um, I think he. I think. I, I. I think next year has the potential to be good as long as he's backed. As long as he's backed. Okay. Woody? Yeah, I think the more I think about it, the more I, obviously now the news has settled, I, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to it. He is a guy, as the guys already said, he's a guy who knows the division. Um, I think we've got to remember as well that this, the, the hoofball tagline actually probably comes more from the fact that Newport's pitch was so shit for the first yeah. couple of years. So if anything, that shows his adaptability because last season Newport was one of the best pitches in the league. <laughs> and then it's just like, so, and then, uh, oh, not last season, but, you know, last, his last season there. And it's, um, so I just think, yeah, you know, I think it shows he's got adaptability. He knows players. Um, he's got good contacts within the game. It looks like he's going to be done, you know, going to be a lot more in charge of recruitment as well. So, which is a big plus. And I think the real drive in some ways is just the fact that we've announced him already you know so he can come in he can see he's seen what the current crop of players looks like um he'll know which ones he can work with i feel like he's going to be the type that's going to be able to turn around and say i don't care if they're on a two-year contract i want them out um you know so uh, which is good this is what we need because there are players that will will be you know stealing a wage um mm -hmm. but yeah and and also i think as well is it depends on the back end, as, as Ben said, and I think Sean's just, just highlighted there. Um, Newport wouldn't have had much of a budget. Walsall didn't have much of a budget. You know, they were very pound land. Um, but, and, you know, so <laughs> mix that in with getting a few set pieces, you know, trying to win us a few set pieces, which is something that's gone missing from Swindon for probably the last 10 years. Is yeah, like being I was going to say, it's pieces. been a while since we, <laughs> yeah. we were creative and actually yeah, decent at yeah. set pieces. Sean I mean, Taylor, I, still, I think, was the last guy. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still dining out on the fact that every time Kasim took a corner, the opposition team tend to score. Um, <laughs> but it's just, um, yeah, so I just think, yeah, I, you know, I think the more I think about it, it was a good, a good realistic target. You know, like I know we always will have, we'll always have these pie in the sky ideas. You know, I would have loved maybe another kind of player i know i think uh, cosy's mentioned it a few times around someone like james milner or someone like that who might be but with james milner now at brighton he's obviously not ready to to to, to stop so i uh, maybe just to tie us over now a good two years with michael and with a bit of backing we'll be an adaptable side we'll be able to play on other pitches we won't rely on one style of football to win us get well hopefully win us games um, so yeah, I think yeah, I think even when I think of the names that were in in the running, realistically, he was probably the the better option um, without trying to sound biased. Um, Cosy said, "Is Flynn officially manager or first team coach?" I believe they've gone Joe manager. with the tagline manager. Yeah, manager, I believe, and uh, in the in the the pot. Well, I, I think Woody just mentioned it, but the the positive thing for me in the statement that the club out today is that that Flynn has actually already identified where we need strengthening and what players he wants to bring in. So one to 11. That's yeah. But, but that's massive, you know, and, and I spoke to somebody a couple of years back connected with Newport about Flynn and he said, all he wants is players that will run through the wall for him. 
He doesn't care how good technically they are or how, you know, he just wants players that will give 100% and they will run for a wall for him. So you'll probably see a couple of those guys probably coming aside for Swindon, somebody, you know, a couple of ex-Newport players or ex Walsall players, players he can trust. Well, Mix Kinsella's that the link, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kinsella or even somebody like... Uh, like an experienced midfielder like Joss Labadee, who's just he's just a shit house. But that's you know that's what he does, and that's what we've missed in our team. You know we don't have that ball winning, ball winning player in there. And I think if you you mix that with some of our some of our more technical footballers that we've already got, you know it's it's I think even Jake Kane said it in his in his interview after the game today. We the team lacks steel, and and that's the the main thing that Flynn will bring. Hopefully, bring will be. Steel and a bit of shithousery, and yeah, um, because I'm, I'm, I agree with Woody. The more I sort of think about it, the more sort of positive I am. Actually, I think mm. it's uh, yeah. Let's like say there's no guarantees, but yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Picking up on a point uh, Joe's just made there. Oh, sorry, Woody, go on. I was just say I, I always, I always tend to quite like play uh, managers that were midfielders as well. Like Mike Flynn was a midfielder. Obviously, Richie Wellens was a midfielder. John Sheridan was a midfielder. You know, I I, th- I just think sometimes with a midfielder, they kind of play in bias where they know the defensive side of the game, they know the attacking side of the game. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So sometimes it does it does help. And then obviously, if he's got the backing of Gavin Gunning, maybe even Charlie Austin as a player coach, hopefully seventy five percent player rather than coach, more of a leader on the pitch type coach rather than a. Um, actual physical coach but the uh, yeah so it's um yeah i just i i, I generally th- i generally think he's going to do well and okay. i'm going to probably eat my hat this time next season but... <laughs> well we've been through uh, another two managers this time next year ben um picking up on something joe said there and and it's kind of been referenced earlier but um with Flynn looking for players that all run through walls, I believe was the quote used, um, potentially, and obviously we don't know what their relationships were at the time, but do you think that might be a a, a positive sign for the likes of Kane from, obviously, his Newport days and, and even Shade from Warsaw days? Well, yeah, I think Shade um, had his best season under um, under him because he came to Swindon with his reputation of being this quite exciting young wingback, uh, which he was then. Um, so um, hopefully he can rediscover what Walsall fans thought of him when they wanted to keep him. Um, Kane as well. I think he played like 25 games for them in his first run out. Um, I think we saw for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, what he can do when his confidence is there, maybe playing a, a different type of game might mm-hmm. suit him. Um, the goal certainly lifted him and hopefully Flynn can unlock that player that I think is in there. Um, and we saw for that brief 25, 30 minutes um, rather than the first 40 minutes where he was absolutely tripe. Um, so maybe they're good. They're good, but I don't think his sentimentality is going to be Flynn's thing. I don't, I, I think if, if we're going to see that, came for the first 40 minutes, then I don't think he'll be in and around the squad very long. Okay. Um, so I think everyone needs to step up and hopefully he sees that and he wants teams to play for him with passion. So fingers crossed. We have someone else waiting in the lobby to join us, but before I, I welcome in on Nick, let me come to you with the question. Um, what do you think Flynn's first priority is? Well, like, like we've already said, he, he needs to bring some good, experienced League Two players in. That the, <clears throat> A, will run through that brick wall, which was, has been mentioned. B, a good, um, what we call a bloody good shithouse player. Um, we want some steel in the side. Um, and if we strengthen from the back and, and through the midfield, we've got um, some, you know, reasonably decent forward line which obviously can be improved but obviously we talk about reviews and players and that but you know I think we we probably need to bring even depending who re-signs um, we could be talking nine or ten players need to come in to strengthen the side to get to the level that we need to be at so you know the first two sign-ins um, hopefully will will tell us where he's going and and will give us that confidence that uh, he's getting it right so they're going to be really important 
and and then we will see where we go from there. But yeah, <clears throat> I think the difficult thing is, as I say, I think we need to bring in anything eight or nine players to uh, have that side strengthened. Then we've got the backup of the younger, more technical players that hopefully can be developed. Um, so then the difficulty is is blending that into a team. Um, you know, but this has probably been one of the worst sides we've had for a long time. Yep. But we've got some bloody good players, which, which is the sad bit. We've mm. got some very good young technical players, but we haven't got a League Two side capable of challenging for promotion. And and that's what he needs to change us into a challenging team for promotion with good, experienced League Two shit houses. And and after that, the football will look after itself. So uh, the eagle-eyed amongst the viewers would have seen that John had joined the panel. Uh, and then just as just as we were getting messages from the likes of Arch there that said evening John <laughs> and uh, Garves <laughs> saying evening John facts the program, he disappeared. Uh, I have had a message from him saying uh, battery's gone on the iPad. Hang on, FFS. So <laughs> John, 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 John will be back. We'll, we'll be hanging there for you, John. For flip's sake. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, John will be back with us shortly where we can ask him his thoughts on the day. PJ there saying, surely Scott Lindsay wants to take shade off our hands of Crawley, question mark. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if one or two ended up going to Crawley this summer. No, in dollar. Potentially. Um, <laughs> before, we welcome, uh, before we welcome John back, um, I mean, this is this is an open question for all of you, really. I'm just going to show a couple of uh, of pictures of, of our day, uh, group pictures. Oh. That here's, here's a picture me and Rich got with the Archers post match. Um, we got a big group yeah. picture just before Ben turned up and before Woody and Ned had all turned up as well. Uh, this is where we met Nick today, and uh, then Ben finally turned up, so we got a group picture with him as well. And there's the there's um, Freddie in there as well as Jack. Uh, amongst all the all the kids joining in um and just uh smiles all around on the end of the season and and really i i put out a um i said in the intro and and i've put out tweets etc but we really do appreciate don't we and, and nick i'll start with you as as the the sort of de facto fans favorite of everybody we do appreciate the the positivity that everyone shows towards us before and after games don't we yeah it is i mean it's quite um I don't know what the word is. It, um, when I was at Wimbledon, I, I had two people, one saying, oh, hello, Ocus, can you sort out this bloody food? What's going on? And then, <laughs> well, then on the tube. Again at breakfast today. Yeah, and at then on the tube coming back, uh, there's a guy there. Oh, you're Nick, aren't you? Yeah. And then when I was leaving the Legends today, as, as I was going out, someone was coming. He said, hello, Nick, all right? Okay, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's great. It's, you know, I, I keep saying to my missus, you just don't understand how famous we are, all of us. So it's, uh, it's you know, she said, "Oh Christ, you, you, you go on a podcast and talk shit, and you come home and talk shit." <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we obviously every comment we get, <clears throat> you know, I speak to everybody. We really appreciate appreciate it. We do this because you know, Fife has said a hundred times because we enjoy doing it, um, and if somebody else does, you know, brilliant. I you think know, it was Sean on the tube because he's just commented yeah. in saying that was me, and I'm sure he said that. Uh, I'm sure he said on the Wimbledon Review episode that was him. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Sean. Hope you hope you're okay, mate. <laughs> um, so, same same for you, Joe. Uh, I mean, you've witnessed it a few times this season when when you've been in, out and about with some of the other fools as well. It's it's a bit surreal, isn't it? Even now, but uh, we are we are incredibly grateful for all the feedback, positive and negative. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit bit of a strange one for for a guy that you know I've spent the majority of my life working on my own, you know, not really being a very in a in a sort of social circle, if you like, and then all of a sudden people recognise me off the internet. It's a, it's a bit of a strange one, but um, but no, it's lovely. Only nice. fans you've got. Yeah, yeah, and you know it, it is nice, and you know I've, I'd like to think people uh, realise that we're big enough and ugly enough to accept bad bad critique as well as good so um you know if you think we can do better then tell us because we're not afraid of being told and no not know. at all and uh 
you know, you know, and, and, and we still got a lot. We still got a long way to go, a lot to learn, and a lot to improve on. And, and we'll we'll obviously do that. But I think the last the last six months, the, the growth we've had in 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 viewers, followers, whatever you want to call them, has been probably far away, far more than we thought we'd ever do. So when you know when when myself, Woody, Ben, and, and yourself, if you sort of started this two years ago, if we just said we'd been here now. <laughs> We said we've been here now with you know getting a thousand views on on youtube we'd have we'd have absolutely laughed so but yeah it's great it's great it's good we're all big time it's to, to be to be fair mate you've just had this message sent in barry says joe still tried to walk past me earlier and i've known him years well i tried to avoid him but i couldn't get away with that. um ben as a as a very influential member when you see messages like this one from pj it's been a tough season watching the club you boys have made my mondays dissecting the weekend's game and my fridays looking forward to the weekend's game more enjoyable so thanks for that it's a a, another one i've known for years (laughs) oh here we go joe's massive all of a sudden but uh but yeah ben it's uh it it is really it's it's surreal but we're incredibly grateful when we see it hasn't it oh we just yeah it's as this whole thing started as as a men's mental health thing for uh during the lockdown and it's just to keep us all carried on going whilst uh, we couldn't go to games or see anyone and it's sort of taken off from then. And, you know, we appreciate any anyone that comments uh, or, or anything, really, anyone that watches. I'm staggered for the numbers that we get. I'm still, because, like, how... Yeah, it's just a couple of fat, beardy men arguing with each other, really, about the football. <laughs> That's just um, me and you. Yeah, but apparently some people like it. So, you know, kudos to them. Fantastic. And thank you for watching. Really, really appreciate it, and I hope we continue to entertain and hope to uh, bring joy to a few Swindon fans or therapy as we've been therapy, so bad yeah. the season. So you know, whatever we do, I hope, I hope we, uh, I, I hope people um, keep watching. And having Mike fun says, and, "I've yeah. met Woody, Claire, Nick, and Wazza. Hope to meet some more full soon. A great pun, a great bunch, even except for that rubbish one. I presume the rubbish one's me." Um, <laughs> Me. Uh, Woody, comments from you on, on I mean, you were obviously on the show the other night and we had a, a very, very nice message sent post-show, didn't we, that I read out to everyone who stayed on for the post-show chat. Um, and uh, again, it's... it's I, I described it online earlier that, that Fools Rush In is more than just uh, a logo or a, or a stream twice a week or even just R12. It's an extended football family. Yeah, I mean, as probably the least recognised member of Falls Rush In when I'm out in the public. Um, oh. it's, um, um, it's actually quite funny because I when, when I go to places and I recognise somebody, everybody's like, oh, do they recognise you from the pod? I'm like, no, I used to coach with them or I used to coach against <laughs> them or, or something like that. So it's never it's never very ready. Apart from, I think it's, um, sorry, I've, I've forgotten his name, Barry. Um, yeah. I think it still introduces me to his daughter as Woody at Bassett. Um, I think it's him. Um, is it, Joe would nod his head if it yeah, is him. Will, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which I love. I love because I feel like I'm more famous with those two than I am with the Bassett fan base. Um, but the, um, uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously, we know why um, it did start off as, as Ben said, just kind of um, a little, you know, kind of lockdown ism, if you like. And then all of a sudden, it just we we expanded. We went into Streamyard. We started doing more interaction. Streamyard allowed us to do more interaction. And obviously, we owe I, I think a thanks to Liam from Lower League Look for that for yeah. kind of giving us that introduction into it, and obviously telling you about it, Fifey. So it allowed yeah. us to engage more. And I think um, the family comment is right. I would probably say, and this is no just genuinely no disrespect to any other podcast, but I think we are the one that probably would reach out a lot more in terms of people coming on people that, that we just know that they're regular watchers and, and things like that. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, are we at merchandise levels yet? Probably not. Um, you know, I think I still, I'm still waiting for Rob Angus to tell us when we can start putting our cups in his shop. Um, <laughs> but, the, um, um, but the, um, but yeah, it's um, no, it's, it's lovely. And I think, I think, all of them, really. All of the podcasts is a good representation of our fans. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Barry's just messaged in. There's too many beards for a five year old to distinguish you all, Woody, off of Bassett. Yeah, I'm the one with the beard and still got hair on top. Um, <laughs> true, true. 
<laughs> My brother accused yeah, me of being bold the other day. <laughs> I think cancel Woody. <laughs> Sorry, right, I've got my own one anyway coming up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, no, it's lovely. Uh, I I always appreciate it when people take the time and effort to come and say hello to us, and you know, and I think it just shows that all the podcast just represents our fan base. Really, we've all got different opinions, we've all got different ways to like it, but we are united in this fact that we're all Swindon Town fans. We all want Swindon Town to do well, um, and it's great. And like I say, I, I've had so, as a Swindon Town fan, I've had some of my greatest memories in terms of just meeting people that I've not normally met with and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and the fact that we can take our watchers, our fans, whatever you want to call them, and we'll invite them out for bowling, we'll invite them out for a drink, they'll invite you lot, uh, they'll invite us to breakfast and, and things like that. So it's, um, yeah, it's lovely. I, I always like it, but I don't see it as a, as a, as a, as a as a, f- a fame thing um i think it's too easy nowadays to be made famous off a podcast um as, as nick's nick's other half is probably right on that, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely think, right yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's too, it is too easy to be famous off a podcast now but um yeah it is i mean it's nice even when i bump into my friends and or somebody who i know but not seen for a while or saw someone a couple of weeks ago that garv and i went to school with and he said, "Oh, I've listened to your guys' podcast." And I just sit there and go, "Like, why? Like, why? <laughs> do you know what? Whenever people <laughs> see have you guys say why, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, so it's always nice when when things like that because um, I 100 percent agree with Je- uh, with what Joe said in terms of we want to be criticised because we do want to be better. Um, we don't want to be the polished product because I think that with the polished product that means that we'll be not allowed to do things. Um, we will question the club when if we were ever given the opportunity to um so yeah it's great um, <laughs> i love it next week i'm on ts so so for those <laughs> for those listening to this thinking i wish you guys would shut the fuck up i want to hear from john he's messaged me again <laughs> Um, is I'm guessing he's referring to his charger. Mrs. has took that size to Spain with her. Soz, mate, what a shambles. I need my phone for work. So I don't think, just, after popping on just to show his face, I don't think John's actually popping on tonight to give an opinion. Oh, bless John. Uh, so so um, apologies for, it, for all the John fans out there, but um, Lola is Mrs. taking the charger to Spain. <laughs> John, you need to have more than one in the house. You really do. Uh, we have this all the time. Amazon is a thing. Uh, Joe is saying, watch this space for FRI merch next season. Um, Nick, we are a podcast who like to give the fans what they want, aren't we? Of course we are. In which case, can you can you sort this one out? Greg has said, I want to hear Nick finally say we won't make the playoffs. <laughs> right. I'll say it now and be the first one to say it. We won't make the playoffs next season because it will be HMS piss the league. <laughs> 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 How's that? Relegation, relegation battle then. Yeah. <laughs> Claire says, thanks for having her on a couple of times this season and being so welcoming. Hashtag fools family. Uh, well, without John, I've got a question for you all. Um, to, to see us through to a conclusion for tonight's episode. Um, our, one of our regulars, one of our favourite regulars and part-time host, Craig, has been banging the drum about early transfer business and how important it is. So now we have a manager in place. I want you to pick a date out of thin air. This is the date the first transfer, the first signing for next season is announced. Joe, what date will Swindon Town sign their first player for next season? I'm going to be optimistic okay, and say somewhere around the 20th of May. 20th of May. Uh, ben. Yeah, I think I'm the same. So I'm going to say Friday, the 19th of May. Okay. 19th of May. PJ <laughs> 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 said, said, I'm going to shave my head, grow a beard and go around pretending I'm part of the FRI panel. He's fat enough. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh, Woody? Um, sorry, I was looking at when the playoff final is. 
I'm going to go with Monday the 29th of May. We'll make our first sign -in. And, uh, oh, hang on, we've got another one in from uh, from Barry. It was lovely to see Joe meeting a new friend after today's game, complaining about social media. How little did he know? <laughs> uh, Nick? Um, I'm going to say that everybody's going to be worried and getting in a tizzle because it'll be the 1st of June. <laughs> Uh, Greg says, I was on about this season, but thanks, Nick. That will do. Yeah. Uh, I know he was on about this season. Yeah. PJ has said, cheeky bastard. <laughs> um, Nick is saying, June the 1st, 11.58 a.m., messy. Um, we got a bit of time. Um, if we want to do a, a quick fire... Uh, we, we won't go through rated, etc. But I'll tell you what. Let's let's keep this short. I will give you all two definite retains and two definite out the doors. Cannot include players returning to their parent clubs. Um, who started the last one? I think it was Joe. So I will start with Woody. Um, are we on about retained as in out of contract? Uh, retained as in retained as in players that absolutely under no circumstances will be leaving the club this summer. Wakelin and Clayton. Okay, and two people definitely will be leaving the club this summer. Hudson and Clayton Worker and Darcy. Oh, what's that? Uh, ben. Two players definitely staying. Hepburn, Murphy and Lavinia. And two players definitely leaving. See, I would have said the same. So I'm going to go for different players. Okay. Um, two players definitely. Sadly, the guy that we sponsored, uh, Harry's, is going to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm going on... I'm sorry, Fifey. I think your man's on his way because he didn't make the bench today. He didn't get any sort of game. Because he's right bagging now. a trick in the cup final tomorrow night. <laughs> he will be back in the cup final tomorrow, but I think he would involved in the squad. I think he's done here. Okay. Uh, Nick, two people definitely staying. Um, Tomlinson. Oh, so you think he's signing? Yeah. Okay. And Clayton. Okay. And two people definitely leaving. Uh, Divine and Darcy. A lot of lot of Darcy out expectations here. Uh, no, Joe, it's like that is not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two people definitely staying, Joe. Um, Khan. Okay. And I'm going to go Wakelin as well. Okay. And two people are definitely leaving. I'm trying to think of somebody different. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the one you no. look like. I, I can't really think of... Uh, Your no son. One. Your son. Yeah, I don't want to say it, but I think Johnny's going to be gone. <laughs> just just as Claire finally gets her message through saying no mention of Williams leaving by anyone yet. He, he was he was the one I was thinking of. He was the one that I was on an hour and over, but I, I don't see I don't see how he stays, to be honest. Um, okay. It's a shame, but... Uh, and another one... I'm not too bothered, really. I, there could be plenty that I'm quite happy to leave, but um, I'm trying to think, of a, I can't think of a different one. So okay. I, I think, prob I think probably Hutton. I think Hutton will probably be gone. Okay, I'm going to to really try and keep the momentum of positive news here by saying people that I expect to be here um, will include Austin and McEachran. Mm -hmm. And the two players leaving, I would say, um, see, leaving's hard because it could be so many. And it, it's the difference between almost certainly leaving and wanting to leave. 
Um, I, I would say Hutton. I think Hutton will go. There's been enough talk about Hutton going that that will probably happen. Mm. Um, and I will go with... I See, I don't think Darcy will. Uh, Aguiar will be my... my yeah, I think there's, yeah. I think there, there's yeah. a couple of young lads as well in there. Uh, Parsons and Dabre, I think. Yeah, the, the, it happens. You know, as much, as much, as much, yeah. especially, uh, especially, especially Parsons. You want to see a local lad do well, no. but he's not. Had, he's had enough chances, I think. Now, and I think his time will come to an end. PJ, I'd love Shade to go, mate, but I don't think he's gonna. Well, PJ has been clear. Maybe he's saying Shade is a definite keep. He, he hates Shade as much as me, so he wants him to go. <laughs> um, what else have we got here in the chat? Gar saying, Adeloy is surely gone. Is he on a long contract? I think he's got another year on his contract. Two years, yeah, he's got another year to go. Um, Claire, very determined in what she wants. As long as George McEachern stays and Jeff Cott leaves, she'll be happy. Um, Sam Smith. And... Uh, what have we got here? Manager is Welsh. Hatswell is a Wales coach. William Stay, question mark. Um, and then again, PJ's timing is somewhat unfortunate because he's put no, no, no. But is that just a shade being a definite keep or a definite leave? <laughs> we'll leave that to the imagination. Um, we've got a special episode planned on Friday um, where we are doing a playoff preview. Uh, and we have fans on from all four uh, of the clubs involved in the playoffs to talk about that. Uh, there may even be a fool or two on to, to give our opinion as well. We look forward to welcoming them and welcoming you on Friday evening at our normal time of 9pm. Uh, but other than that, I think that covers everything. Thank you very much for your support over the, the regular season for STFC. As, a, as I've said before, we are continuing all over the summer. We've got various special episodes, special guests and... Uh, our usual array of shit quizzes and maybe even a defend the indefensible coming up in the not too distant future either. Uh, so we hope to keep you entertained until pre-season begins. And uh, for want of a better phrase, we go again. Thank you very much from everyone at Falls Rush In. The season's finally over. We can, we can celebrate that fact. And we will see you again on Friday. And uh, what, this time next week will be our season review episode where... All the panellists get to give their full uh, unedited review of all the current squad's performances and our end of season alternative awards. Remember, if you've got any particular nonsense awards you want us to give out, um, DM us categories and they will also be announced next Monday. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. From everyone at Fools Rush In, good night. Take my